So let's get a bit more creative with our photography. It doesn't always have to end with taking the photograph and that being it. We've got tons of creative tools at our disposal when we use in Photoshop. And today we're gonna to show you a little technique of how to add uh, images actually into text, just like this. So let's get started. So let's start off our little creative project by opening a brand new document because what we need to begin with is some text. So let's just go to File, New, and we're just going to open up a simple document, an A4 document. So let's start off there. I think actually just for the purposes of this tutorial, we will flip this document around. So we're going to go to Image, Image Rotation, 90 degrees clockwise. Just fills the frame a little bit more. I think it's a bit easier to see. So we'll make it a little bit larger. Now, all we need to do is add some text. I always like to work on separate layers from the background. So we're gonna start a new layer and we can do that either by pressing the plus icon in the very bottom corner of the layers panel or simply going to layer and pressing new and then layer. And we'll actually, we'll call this layer text just so we've got a good bit of housekeeping. Now our text tool is on our vertical toolbar about two thirds of the way down. So let's just draw our text box here. Now we can see from some of our tools at the very top that our text is initially going to appear white. So if we just click on that and then let's just make it black, it makes it a lot easier that we can see what we're writing. And just for the purposes of this tutorial, let's type in the word vintage. Okay, because I think it's going to work potentially with the image that I've chosen to demonstrate with. Let's make this font much bigger. You can either type in the font at the very top, choose from the presets, or by selecting the text, we can just make it bigger by pressing the up key on our little arrow keyboard. I'm actually gonna change it to make it a little bit more bolder, a little bit more defined. You can change different fonts as well if you want to actually find a style of font that kind of sits and suits your word quite nicely. I think that's actually quite nice as it is there. So we're gonna actually put that in the center of our frame. And now it's important for us to actually rasterize our layer so we can make it editable. And what that means is that if we right click upon the text layer here, and we've got the option of rasterize type. That means we can basically select elements of the type itself, the individual letters. Um, that's gonna make it editable for us to when we actually import our image into it. So it's always important to do that because it is very tricky, if not impossible to actually do it without rasterizing. So we do that first, and now we've got our text layer. Now what we need to do is actually get our photograph. So this is the photograph that I've chosen and hopefully you can kind of understand why I've chosen that word vintage using this kind of textured background here. So that's the element that we're actually gonna to use to impose within the image. Now what we've got to do is select the areas that we want that image to fill. So simply by using our magic wand tool, you can see that on the vertical toolbar, about three, four icons down in a sub menu, just simply find the magic wand and then all we're going to do is just select the individual letters in our word here. Now, because the magic wand tool only works on a single click selection, if we want to make multiple objects and multiple items selected, we need to hold down our shift key. So if you can actually see when I press shift, you get a little plus icon next to the crosshairs that allows us to add more. So if we hold down that shift key and select all those letters of vintage. It means all the words selected now. Now, if we simply go back to our individual photograph, and again, what we need to do with that is select it. So we're gonna to go to select and all, and then we're going to go to select, we're going to go to edit and copy. And now we can actually dispose with that for the minute. We're just gonna minimize it and return back to our vintage layer. And for this, as long as this top layer is selected here, our text, we're gonna to go to edit paste special and then paste into and then hopefully you can actually see now that we've created a layer mask with that photograph in it so if we use our move icon we can actually move the image around so it's moving around within that selection of the letters now some of it's not necessarily fitting as wide as we want some areas are black some areas are filled with the image but that's simply changeable we can just go down to edit and then we go further down here to free transform. You can also use control and T or command and T if you're on a Mac. And that will then allow you, if we hold down the alt key, 
just to expand the image and make it wider. So we actually fill it with a lot more of that background. Now we can choose to either have the, the vase, the pot that was in the original shot, or just leave it with that texture. We can make it a little bit smaller if we want as well. And there we go. Super simple, very, very clean and efficient. What I may actually do even just for this example is just unlock the background layer and just invert it. We can do that simply by pressing Control and I or Command and I, and it just adds something a little bit different in terms of giving us a bit more impact. But we can always still return to our vintage layer and our image and still move it around if we want to just perfect the position a little bit more afterwards. But there we go. It's a really, really simple way of being able to add an image into the background of some text, just to add a little bit more texture, a bit more color, a bit more interest. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Keep looking out for iPhotography for more. Thanks for watching.